Yo everyone, what is going on? Welcome to the video and in today's video as always I'm going to be taking you through some of my brand new recipes and as you may have seen from the thumbnail Today's recipes are absolute quality. They are so calorie and macro friendly so easy to make so tasty as well So yeah, you are in for a treat and as well as that I am also going to be taking you through some of the little things I do and the little systems that I have in place uh, to ensure that I can remain on track with my diet on a daily basis and pretty much minimize the times that I tend to massively overeat or eat way too much junk food. So if that is something that you really struggle with, if you really struggle to maintain consistency with your diet, then this video will probably help you a lot. So make sure you stick around. And before we go to my first meal, I do want to say a massive thank you to everyone uh, because last week I hit the 20,000 subscriber milestone, which is just, I don't know, it's really cool. Like this time last year, I think I had like 2,000 subscribers or something like that. So 2020 was a good year for me. I think it was just like one video. One video did really, really well and it just snowballed from there. Uh, so I'm glad like YouTube is finally kind of starting to build some momentum because I have been posting for years and years at this stage. But yeah, I really want these videos to continue to reach as many people as possible because I know that so many people can benefit from them. So if there is something that you could do right now, it is simply just to scroll down and smash the like button. And I know loads of YouTubers say this all of the time, but it really, really does help the channel grow. It helps it reach a bigger audience. So yeah, I would really, really appreciate it if you do so. But now it's time for some breakfast. And if you are thinking about nachos right now, which you are most likely not, uh, you are going to love this one. Okay, so I'm gonna kick things off by adding 200 ml of egg whites to a frying pan. I'm gonna season them with some sea salt. And this seasoning that I've only started using pretty recently, you've probably never seen me use it before, it is smoked paprika. And while the egg whites are cooking away, I'm going to add 200 grams of these no added sugar beans. No added sugar is key because they are low in calories uh, to a saucepan and just let them heat gently. And then I'm gonna get one of these small kids wrap. Cut it up into eight triangles like you would do with a pizza. Then I'm gonna spray my air fryer with some one calorie spray. I am going to add my nachos into the air fryer. Spray them with some one calorie spray and cook them for five minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. And if you do not have an air fryer, I highly recommend getting one. I actually didn't think I needed one until I got it. It's so handy. But you can also make these nachos by baking them in the oven. And last but not least, we have 10 grams of reduced fast cheese. Okay, we are looking very good. And I have to say that I am a huge fan of beans and they are kind of like a dark horse when it comes to their nutritional breakdown. So in 200 grams of these no added sugar beans, uh, there is 172 calories, a nice 11.4 grams of protein, and there is nine grams of fiber. So all in all, I would say that this is a very good breakfast option. It is calorie friendly, uh, it is high in protein, it is filling as well because uh, the egg whites are a really voluminous protein source. The beans are full of fiber. If you go with a brown wrap as opposed to a white wrap, that is gonna be high in fiber as well. And you get to make little nachos, which is always nice. Oh, and I do wanna let you all know that the J Clark Fitness Nutrition Hub is now live. So in here you get access to my personal calorie and macro calculator so you can calculate your specific nutritional requirements based on your goal. You get access to all of my recipes that I update on a regular basis and for each recipe there is a demonstration video, there is a list of ingredients, there is the full nutritional breakdown. You get access to your own account on my website and this is a place that you can log in and track your progress uh, and so much more. And if you sign up using the code that is on screen now, uh, you will get 15% off. So, you know, if your nutrition is an area that you really struggle with, if you feel like you really need some help, some direction, uh, then do not let this opportunity pass you to finally get on top of it uh, for an absolute bargain. Okay, so the first point that I want to touch on when it comes to remaining on track with my diet uh, is that I built up quite a big awareness of the emotions that lead me to overeating. And one of the ones that I have really nailed down uh, over these past few months is stress. So with COVID and just like everything that it has affected in terms of my personal life, my business, my own mental health, uh, I have had days over these past few months where I've just felt completely overwhelmed. And I know that on these days, my chances of overeating go way up. And this is obviously just a bit of a coping mechanism. Uh, but you know, now that I am aware of the fact that I am a stress 
stress eater. Something that I like to do, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis is minimize my stress as much as possible. And that is probably one of the main reasons that I like to, you know, feel very organized. I like to plan ahead uh, with my days just to make sure they are as efficient and effective as possible. And, you know, that I always feel in control. And for me, it's stress, but you might have a different emotion or a different kind of event in your life that causes you to overeat. So it could be uh, a feeling of fatigue. It could be over-exercising. It could be trying to hoard too many calories for the evening time and you eventually just lose control because you're so hungry. Uh, it could be uh, when you have a few too many alcoholic drinks. It could be when you fight with your significant other. So I think it is really important to nail down the things or the things that cause you to overeat, you know, on a regular basis. So for example, uh, if it is over-exercising, then you might aim to exercise a little bit less. If it is trying to hoard your calories for the evening times, then you might aim to have more regular meals. If it is fighting with your significant other, then you might sit down with your significant other and say, here, why are we fighting so much? Or at least, and maybe put a different coping mechanism in place so, so that when you fight uh, with your significant other, you are not going directly to the fridge. So for example, instead of going directly to the fridge, you could say, okay, whenever I do have a fight uh, with my boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, I'm gonna go for a walk and maybe I'll go to the shop and get a diet drink. So at least that way you are replacing an unhealthy habit uh, with a healthier habit. But before I continue, let's go to the next one. Okay, so we are back in the kitchen for my next meal. And I actually don't think I have made anything like this for YouTube anyway, uh, but I think it is gonna go down well with a lot of people. Okay, so I'm going to start by cutting 200 grams of chicken breast into chunks. Okay, so I have my chicken in a mixing bowl. I'm gonna season with some sea salt, some garlic, some chili flakes, some turmeric, some nutmeg, five mil of soy sauce. I am going to give it a good mix with my hands, which I absolutely hate doing. And I am just going to let that marinate while I get to work on some veg. Okay, now I am going to cut half of a red pepper into chunks, half of a yellow pepper into chunks, and half of an onion into chunks. Okay, so now I am going to get some skewers and slide the chicken and the veg onto it. I think I'm gonna go red pepper, yellow pepper, onion, chicken, and repeat. All right, so we are looking good. Three big juicy skewers. I think I could have rationed it over four. Uh, before wouldn't fit on my pan at once, I don't think. And now I am going to add each one to the pan and I'm going to turn them occasionally uh, just so the chicken is fully cooked through. I cannot describe how good these smell. And the seasoning plays a huge role in that. So I know they aren't your typical seasonings, no smoke paprika, what is going on? But if you do not have them in your house, go get them, use some soy sauce as well, marinate the chicken and it makes a huge difference. And I think when you see skewers, you're like, nah, too complicated. But honestly, it's so easy. It's a bit of chicken, a bit of veg. You just slide them onto the skewers. So yeah, if you are looking to mix things up, maybe on a Friday evening or a Saturday evening or something like that cook up some skewers have it on a bed of rice or maybe with some homemade chips and yeah you will not regret it just look how good they look. Actually, now that I think about it, when I was talking about the seasoning that I used, uh, instead of saying it was a bit weird or different or whatever I said, I should have said that it was a bit obscure. Obscure, chicken skewer, smash the like button. All right, so the next point that I want to talk about is removing temptation. And this is something that has actually helped me a lot over the last few years. So let's go back to when I was younger. And every Friday evening, pretty much every Friday evening, I used to buy a family bag of Doritos Chili Heatwave flavor, of course. Uh, and I used to convince myself that I was gonna ration it out over the next couple of days. But lo and behold, come 11 p.m. on the same Friday evening, the whole bag would be completely empty. Uh, and I would usually feel so bad about this that I would just keep eating and eating uh, because, you know, in my mind, I had already screwed up on my diet. So I might as well just keep going uh, and start fresh on Monday. So I was in that, you know, unhealthy, all or nothing mindset. And after, you know, years and years of being in this cycle, I kind of took a step back from the situation. And I was just like, what am I doing to myself? You know, like, if I buy a family bag of Doritos, of course I'm gonna wanna eat the whole bag. That doesn't make me a bad person because they are absolutely delicious, but at the same time, 
it doesn't line up with my goals to go through a whole bag of Doritos on a Friday evening. So I kind of made the decision at that point that whenever I want a bag of Doritos going forward, I'm just gonna buy a small bag because I know myself that the chances of me rationing out a family bag over the course of a couple of days are very, very slim. And even if I had to spend a little bit more money on buying things separately as opposed to in a family pack or whatever, I really don't mind because now I just don't have that shitty feeling once per week where I'm feeling guilty uh, about overeating and another thing uh, that I really like about this is the system that I have in place that is that I do not store lots of extra treats in my house especially the ones that I know I find tough to have in moderation so whenever I want something like this I have to you know physically walk to the shop to go get it so that way you know I am still getting my treat I am not going way overboard and I am actually getting some extra steps in in the process but yeah before I touch on my final point Let's go to my final meal. Okay, so it is time for the final recipe of today's video. It is a dessert-like recipe as usual, uh, and I am going to be making some high-protein, calorie-friendly brownies. And brownies are something that I've actually wanted to make for ages now, uh, but to be honest, I think when most people try and make healthy brownies or high-protein or low-calorie brownies, they usually turn out just really, really shit, to be honest, let's not lie. So yeah, I didn't want that to be the case here. There was a bit of trial and error involved in getting this recipe right. But yeah, I definitely did, and it is an absolute banger now so let's give it a go all right so first things first let's add 120 ml of low-fat milk to this blender jug thingy that is going to be followed by 100 grams of this vanilla fat free yogurt next I'm gonna pour in 60 grams of porridge oats I'm gonna crack in one egg next in goes 30 grams of chocolate brownie whey protein 60 grams of cocoa powder 20 grams of zero calorie syrup I'm going for the chocolate flavor one uh, from Walden Farms but you can use whatever flavor and whatever brand you like then I'm gonna add two teaspoons of low calorie sweetener and finally I'm gonna add one teaspoon of baking powder okay then I'm gonna get it nice and secure in my blender and I'm gonna blend it up for a couple of minutes until everything is nice and smooth all right, we are looking good. I am gonna pour the brownie mix into a baking tin that you can see I have lined extremely elegantly uh, with some baking parchment. I am going to smooth it all out. And as the final ingredient, I am going to add 20 grams of mini marshmallows into the mix. All right, so we are looking good. And now I am going to put them in the oven uh, at 200 degrees Celsius for about 12 to 15 minutes. So there's not really much I can say about these brownies other than you need to give them a go. There's 10 little brownie bites on the plate. Each one has just over 80 calories, which is actually pretty good if you think about it because the kind of normal snack size chocolate bars uh, have about what 100 calories 110 calories each one has over six grams of protein which is pretty decent and most importantly they actually taste like brownies because in my opinion there's no point in having like 50 calorie brownies if they just taste like shit uh, so what i recommend is saving up the calories for like three of these have them one evening and just treat yourself and they actually keep really well in the fridge as well so you could ration them out uh, over you know the following few days or if you do not trust yourself like i probably wouldn't you could just make a batch and share them with your family or your friends or whatever. Okay, so last but not least, I wanna talk about how I make my diet work for me. Uh, and personally, I prefer, you know, to be in a position where I can eat more on the weekends uh, and I don't mind eating less during the week. So that is exactly how I set up my diet. So for example, let's just say your calorie goal is 2000 calories per day. That is 14,000 calories per week. And within reason, uh, it is up to you how you spread those 14,000 calories out across the week. So from Monday to Friday, you might consume 1,800 calories calories and then on Saturday and Sunday uh, you might consume 2,500 calories and that is still a total uh, of 14,000 calories so your fat loss if that is what your goal is aimed towards will still be the very same as it would uh, if you were consuming 2,000 calories every single day. Now one thing I will say about this calorie cycling method is just to be responsible with it and uh, pretty much you know don't take the piss don't try and hoard a huge amount of calories to have in one day uh, because even though you know you still might be achieving your fat loss goal uh, you are 
are not really creating a healthy relationship with food. And as a result, you're probably going to be feeling, you know, really low on energy most of the time. Your training will suffer, your recovery will suffer, uh, your overall muscle growth and results uh, will suffer. And it's just not really a great place to be. So yeah, my advice here is just to be sensible with your calorie cycling. Uh, and even on your lower calorie days, make sure that you are still feeling pretty good. All right, everyone, I'm going to wrap the video up there. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed uh, the recipes. I hope you enjoyed my little chat about how I remain on track with my diet. And if you did, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. It really, really means a lot. Make sure you smash that subscribe button if you have not already. And yeah, if you are feeling extra kind, then make sure you comment below uh, and let me know that you did enjoy the video. Oh, and remember that my nutrition hub is live as of right now. So if that is something that you are interested in, I will leave the link to that in the comment section and you can go check it out. So yeah, thank you again for watching. I hope you are all keeping well uh, and I will see you in the next video.